Douglas Cooling and Heating, serving the Birmingham area for 38 years, 988-3706. That's Douglas. This is the Weather Extreme video for uh, Sunday, August the 28th. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters, and wow, it seems like August is winding down quickly, and we'll be heading into September, which is, of course, the peak of hurricane season. In the meantime, let's take a look at what Hurricane Irene is doing. Irene uh, has uh, been pounding the East Coast for uh, about the last 24 hours or so, maybe a little bit longer. And there's a look at it as it approaches New York City. This is uh, actually from the New York City uh, radar. The closest radar actually was down. I suspect uh, communications issues probably causing that problem. The uh, infrared picture of Irene shows that she is uh, somewhat uh, reduced in intensity and strength. She is barely a hurricane, and I suspect in the next probably six to eight hours it will be downgraded to a tropical storm as it comes ashore at uh, New York City and uh, heads up through New England, of course, uh, dumping copious amounts of rain, which it has already uh, done. There's a look at the overall Atlantic Basin, and uh, we now have a new one coming off the Atlantic coast. That one uh, could be our next interesting storm. We'll see that on the uh, GFS, but there's Irene and then another one. Uh, just to uh, or just to the south of uh, Bermuda, and then the one off the uh, African continent. And uh, again, that one uh, probably likely to be our next next one. Here is a look at the track of Irene, and uh, Irene again headed up through New England, uh, likely to be downgraded to a tropical storm uh, later today. All right, back to Central Alabama, and there's a look at uh, Trustville this morning, with a beautiful shot of the sun rising. Uh, over the hills to the east, and then couldn't help but enjoy the rather tranquil, tranquil scene on the Tom Bigby River at Demopolis. I'm sure the water there a lot less churned up than it is on the Atlantic coast. Surface map this morning, of course, Irene stands out uh, quite a bit. That and the large high-pressure system over the um, south-central United States. Uh, we do have drier air that filtered into our area yesterday, thanks to the circulation around Irene and the, and the deep troughiness that Irene has helped to create. In the upper atmosphere, you can see that northwesterly flow, and you can see with the water vapor imagery here, you can see the uh, slightly drier air over uh, much of the southeastern U.S. and uh, a couple of showers in the Gulf, it looks like. But indeed, uh, that has uh, helped to make even the uh, lower 90s yesterday feel a little bit nicer. We're still quite warm across the southern tier of the United States and uh, with the clouds and the tropical air that Irene is bringing to the mid-Atlantic states and up into New England, they're even quite warm uh, this morning with these 5 a.m. temperatures uh, ranging uh, above 60 and all of the yellow and the gold and the orange area. Speci specifically in central Alabama, we're dealing with temperatures generally in the lower and mid-60s this morning. You can see the dew points also down around 60 degrees, some spots getting into the upper 50s, and of course that drier air feels very, very nice. The uh, watch warning map still looks like a bit of a Christmas tree across uh, the uh, east coast of the United States from the North Carolina area, the Outer Banks, all the way up into New England with all kinds of advisories, uh, severe thunderstorms, hurricanes, every, just everything with all that. And of course, flooding, a big issue, uh, and another seven inches possible across parts of New England. Uh, already probably as much as uh, 12 to 15 inches dumped in parts of the mid-Atlantic states. And uh, notice on the QPF, the uh, huge bullseye over the western Gulf of Mexico, uh, GFS indicating the possibility that we may see a little bit of a disturbance down there. Not a tropical system, apparently, but something that could bring some rain down to the coast area. We'll talk about that in a moment. And the uh, Storm Prediction Center outlooking a slight risk, of course, uh, from uh, Rhode Island, the eastern half of Massachusetts, parts of New Hampshire, Maine, and Connecticut uh, for slight risk, and that is in the right front quadrant of Irene. Slight risk also over parts of Nebraska, Iowa, and South Dakota. The 06C GFS model run this morning, and of course the two features uh, that we've been talking about for quite some time now, Irene uh, over New England, and then uh, in addition to that, the heat bubble or the upper ridge over the Four Corners area. 
Not much changes uh, dramatically for Monday as Irene does uh, move on out into uh, eastern Canada, but that keeps the trough over the eastern half of the country. So look for one more dry day uh, with lowered humidities at least on Monday. Uh, on Tuesday, we see that trough advance off to the east coast and out into the Atlantic. But I don't think the moisture will return until Wednesday, and uh, so the humidity stayed down just a little bit on Tuesday as well. On uh, Wednesday, the ridge returns, and with that, some moisture is also returning. I don't think we'll have any uh, isolated showers on Wednesday. Thursday, however, as the ridge does return in full force, we've gotten a little bit moisture back. And I think as we head into Thursday, Friday, and next weekend, I think there's a possibility of isolated showers. But again, for the most part, uh, most of us will stay dry. The ridge is still the story on uh, Friday. But notice the GFS has now developed a bit of a disturbance uh, over coastal, uh, over the area of Louisiana and extreme southeast Texas. And that translates to a bit of rain along the coast there. I'm not sure what the GFS uh, is uh is seeing, but certainly it could be that a little piece of the troughiness stayed, uh, got cut off, and so the GFS is suggesting that we'll see some rain over that area. That little uh, disturbed area stays with us on Saturday, and it stays with us on Sunday as it's a, a bit of a, just a, a pool, uh, a little, a little, almost a closed low uh, at 500 millibars, but uh, certainly. Uh, causing some rain and showers over parts of uh, southeast Texas and coastal Louisiana. And I'm sure that uh, a lot of that area could certainly use that as we head into the first few days of September. Now, going out into voodoo country, uh, remember I mentioned early on about the disturbance off the African continent. Indeed, uh, it looks like the GFS is showing it on the 9th of September. Um, it is apparently the GFS suggesting that it will stay out to sea, but you can see the reflection in the upper atmosphere chart there, the 500 millibar chart uh, off of uh, New York and the uh, mid-Atlantic states. And then finally, at the end of the period, as we head out around the 12th, uh, you can see something that could bring some rain to the southeastern U.S. And believe me, with the rain that we haven't seen in August, we could certainly use something like that. And that looks like the next reasonably significant chance for any rain, the 12th, of August, uh, the 12th of September. That's a long way off just yet. Well, thanks for tuning in to the Weather Extreme video. I expect uh, James Spann to be back in the saddle tomorrow with the next edition around uh, 7 o'clock or so. In the meantime, I hope your day is a good one. Godspeed. Each day there are new stories to tell about the people who live here and the place we call home. All of the faith. Sharing your stories on ABC 3340, Alabama's news leader.